today's video, we're going to be talking about the Victor AC920 action and web camera. I'm going to be going a little bit in depth on my pros and cons, features, and more. So let's get into the video. If this is your first time on the channel, this is Lifeaholics Fishing, and my name is Chris. I'll be bringing you the best that the Northeast has to offer as far as fishing goes. We're talking about products, guides, tips, tricks, and much more. So if you find value in that type of content, please consider subscribing. Okay, so before we start and get any further into this video, I want to give you guys a little context and background. I was reached out around December by Kevin from Victor asking if I would like to try out their new AC920 action camera. Of course, I have had an AC700. That was the very first action camera that I've ever owned, and I loved it, did a review on it, so naturally they reached out. Now, I told them straight out I wasn't gonna be doing a quick review. I always, just like my AC920 video, which if you haven't seen, is up here in the scorecard. I'll make sure to link it in the description below as well. That is the cheapest, by far, action camera on the market. So. I wanted to spend time with it just like I did with that one. I didn't want to rush into a review. I wanted to make sure I actually know this camera inside and out, knows its pros, its cons. If someone asks me, hey, I have a problem with it, I know how to fix it. So with that said, I have not been paid by them. I was given this product for free, but it is not going to change my opinion about it. I am not being endorsed by them at all for it. So I'm going to be giving a very straightforward and honest opinion on it. So let's, you know, let's get right into its features. So I'm not going to be getting really geeky and technical on this review. Here on the screen right now, these are the specifications for both video, photo, and anything else important that you might need to know when before and when purchasing this action camera. The most I'm going to do is just touch on the ones that I really found to be key points in when purchasing it, and that's about it. First thing being 4K 60 FPS video quality. And that right there is with the electronic image stabilization, which this camera uses a Sony sensor that has a 170 degree super wide angle lens and six axis stabilization, which is just great. It's not perfect, but it is great. I do fishing videos, mainly fishing videos. I use it for when I'm walking around and doing my talking head videos. Right now I'm on my phone because of recording with the, you know, doing a review on this, but typically I would be using this just for about everything. So that was a huge selling point because AC700, you can record it 4K 60F, but you could not have the image stabilization on. You, the highest you can do it was 4K 30, I believe, or 24, but either way, this does it all. You can go all the way down to 720p or at its highest quality and still have the image stabilization on and much more. So after the quality points, photos, 20 megapixels, plus of course it has the same features as the AC700 does, burst shot, it has time lapse, that also goes for video, some great features, slow motion, actually for the video, here is some slow motion that I got in the winter. When I first got this, I thought I love this. Here this is. Tell me what you guys think. It's pretty great. It's at 120 frames per second and still at high def. So good footage. Nonetheless, it still does what it says it does. After that, you have driving mode and you also have some other small features, which really isn't anything crazy to talk about. It's pretty much the same as the AC700 when it comes to that aspect. The biggest difference being it has wind noise reduction, still has the same uh, exposure where you're able to go up to plus 2.0 and negative 2.0. The ISO, bl plenty of different effects you're able to add, white balance, black and white, same stock as Victor has always provided in their action cameras. After that, the big bonus for me was the touch screen. Now it has a two inch LCD touch screen and this is actually, it plays back at 320 by 240 pixels. That's the playback on it. So it's not perfect, it's pretty choppy. To get the full quality of your 4K footage, you'll have to either use the app, which another core feature is the Wi-Fi Connect that you're able to connect to your phone via the iSmart app. It is absolutely great, so much better than the original uh, DV Smart app that the EC700 used. 
and once you change it over, you're able to control this from that, and you're also able to transfer media, delete it, etc. So after that, you also have the remote control. It's a Bluetooth remote control that uh, you're able to control. It says 10 meters. I found more like nine to 10 feet, which is uh, a lot less than what it says, but that's where it usually gets around pretty shoddy. But if you're putting it on a trail or if you're looking to get some B footage, it is perfect for that. More pros, it comes with smart features, which I found to be very helpful, especially if you're first starting out. I can see how this could be a great, great reason to buy it, especially if you don't know the settings that it should be at or you're not sure it automatically gives it to you, you know, you have more normal, seamless, you have time-lapse, slow motion, you just click it, it'll automatically give you default settings. And once you learn more about that specific preset, you can change the settings accordingly and go up and down from there. Typically, when I am out fishing, when I have it either on my chest or my hat, I am always at 4K, 30 FPS, maybe sometimes even 1080, 60 FPS, but it just depends on how long the video might be. And also the conditions outside, if it's super sunny, I'll go down because it's a lot clearer. But conditions like this, I'll go up. But mainly I have the EIS on, depending on the wind. If it's really windy, I will have the wind noise reduction on. And then I also have uh, the looping video, which is another huge, huge feature on here that I really recommend always having. You can have it in one minute, three minute, five minute intervals basically meaning that as you continuously record, it will chop up the videos at the duration that you set, one minute, three minute, five minute. When you're doing YouTube videos like this and you are continuously shooting, especially fishing videos, I can go two hours without catching sometimes and I only need that little three to five minute clip, that is huge. Next big point is 120 gigabyte micro SD capability. That is double of what the AC700 was. So that is a huge, huge win right there. Wrapping it up with the uh, pros and the features, core features that would make you want to purchase this. The battery is 1350 mega amps, so much better than the original. Yes, it's only an extra hundred, so it's only a little bit bigger, but you can get 120 minutes of straight continuous high quality recording using that one. Plus it comes with two and in the package, it also comes with 20 different accessories for head, bicycle, helmet mount, and so much more, just like the AC700. Personally, I, I do love those accessories. You can never have enough, but I usually get this one right here. This one is actually by Newer. It is a 50-in-1 kit that I highly recommend and would suggest getting over these ones. It's so much better quality, plus it's pretty cheap for how much you get with it, and it's always good to have backup. So I would definitely recommend that. Again, everything will be linked in the description below. So you, everything I'm talking about, you will find there. So now that we went over the big points for me, price points and my pros for this camera, let's talk about the cons. There are a few, not many, but considering the price of it, you always have to keep in mind that you're paying for what you get. When compared to the GoPro Hero 9, that's $350 when on sale, up to $600 when it's not it's uh you do get a big bang for your buck when it does keep up with that camera it may not have the front display the uh, better stabilization but it does do the quality video that you want in an action camera so one downside that i don't like com when comparing it especially to a gopro you know there's more of a pro you can use it with most gopro accessories but the ones you can't is because of this right here you, in order to use this on anything, a chest mount, a selfie stick like this, anything, you have to have it in this housing. It's the same as the AC700. It can be annoying. It could also be a little frustrating if you are new to the action uh, camera game. But as long as you have that housing with you, which you only get one, which is kind of a downfall for me, especially because if you lose that, your only other alternative is the waterproof housing, which I will get to in, to in, a, in a minute. So that's one kind of big downfall for me, always having to have that housing. So you're limited on some of the accessories that you can use. You always have to have that housing. And if you don't, you're stuck with the waterproof housing. And that would be my next con. This is not waterproof. You cannot, like the GoPro Hero 8 and 9, you can't take this and just dip it in water. You first need to put it into the waterproof housing 
And once you put it into the waterproof housing, it can go down to, I have it right here, it can go up to 130 feet depth in the housing and record perfectly. And you can also use the remote while it's underwater and the app. I believe the connection starts to get crazy around like 10 feet deep, but still having that option is always great. But not being, not being waterproof, especially as a fisherman, being outdoors around water a lot, you know, you have to make sure it's constantly secure because if it gets wet, you just lost all that money. Next on the cons, the battery door. Now, this is the battery door. As you see, it has this little red tag on it. It's a little tricky and kind of more complicated than what it needs to be. A little better than the AC700, but so what you do is you have to pull on this. And once you pull on it, it pops open and then your battery comes out. So you have that tag. Now, is that the correct way to do it? I have no idea. Um, after looking at it and having it for so long, I figured it was more common sense to have it like that because you have that little, little space as you guys can see. So uh, I figured that, you know, when you go and put it in, that's how it's supposed to be. Because if not, then you have to get some type of nickel, like some small thing in that groove and then use it to push it open and pry it open really so that that it's just it's more complicated than it needs to be it could be a lot simpler i think they can improve on that the next con i would say is it doesn't come with an sd card you know i i understand that sd cards are you know expensive but even most dslr cameras gopros they come with the bare minimum sd card allowing you to be able to plug and play get out there and start recording Unfortunately, if you are buying this and didn't get a micro SD card to go with it, you can't get out there and just start using it. The only thing you can use it for, which is a feature I didn't uh, fail to mention before, but I am now, is the webcam. You can put this on, make sure it's in its housing, plug it in, use it completely as a webcam. It does great footage. Here is a live I did using it as my web camera. I use it quite often, it's so much better than having to connect my phone and deal with it that way. So, but it's just, if you don't have an SD card, you're, you know, you have a useless camera. So make sure that you get one. You need a class 10, 128 gigabyte SD card. That's the max it can hold. I highly recommend getting it. Maybe even a couple. It doesn't fill up really, really quick, but it does fill up quicker than you might think. So having multiple and having the max, always, always good practice. So the last thing of note, this goes for the photos and the videos. As you see, it's failing light right here. I do have my, my little selfie light on right now, but if I were to be using the action camera on that, this failing light, it does something to the lens. I noticed it does it with pretty much all cameras, even my iPhone, uh, I have the 11 Pro Max, and it, it's one of the best cameras on the market by far. It, it's amazing. But in this failing light, even with photos, it could be a kind of like a decently well lit area, but if it's during the failing light, those pictures and especially those videos, they're gonna come out really dark and trying to, you know, edit them in post, it couldn't be a pain and it never usually comes out right. So just something to be, you know, weary of, especially if you're fishing, using it for fishing in the failing light, right at dusk or first light, safe light can be kind of tricky. So, you know, pick and choose your times you're recording. The next con I discovered now, this is all seasonal and it's gonna be based on where you live. Now I am in the Northeast up in Pennsylvania and we get cold winters. Right when I got it, it was at the end of December, kind of around Christmas and I did use it through January and February. I actually caught Northern Pike using it. Here's a little clip from that. But just so you're aware, even if it's in the waterproof casing, it doesn't matter any temperatures below 25 30 degrees will start to get it glitchy especially if there is some type of wind or breeze going on it'll just make it colder faster so you have to take it off put it in your pocket warm it up and then you're good to go but i'm I, i've guesstimated anywhere between 10 and 15 minutes at most at a time before it'll go glitchy and what you'll see uh you'll see what i mean if you use it in the cold pretty much your screen will go from being normal and then it'll just split everything it'll look like you have two different screens and all the footage you get from there some of it will be okay 
but if you don't have the looping on where it starts to glitch out all those files will be corrupted and unusable so just be wary of that if you have been finding value from this video and you've been liking it so far please do me a favor smash that like button and make sure if you have not subscribed hit that little red button below with the little bell next to it. That way you're notified of all my new videos when they come out. I have plenty coming up with some fishing events that you're not gonna wanna miss out. Not name drop too much, but iCast 2021 new products. If you're interested in that stuff, make sure you're subscribed. I will be doing live streams and videos from the event. Also in the comments below, let me know if you have used it, if you're thinking about getting it, if you've used any of the Vixure products before and your thoughts on it. I'd love to hear from you guys, get your opinions and see where you think that they could uh, improve on this a little bit. Okay, so let's wrap up. Now, one uh, big feature, one big feature that I did fail to mention, because it's not kind of a, it's really, it's not a huge point of interest for many people. It is for me. Uh, mainly being outside, sometimes in big crowds, the audio. Now, the, the internal microphone is great if you have it close by. If it's anywhere from three feet and further, it can get really tricky, especially if it's in a loud surroundings. You will not be able to pinpoint your voice as easily as you would if you clipped on the external microphone it does come with. And what's unique about this one, it actually plugs into where you would charge it at right at that uh, Android charger section. It's amazing quality. Be weary though. In the winter, I had plugged it right here underneath my gator and also my winter coat. So it was pretty close to my neck and I thought it was far enough away, but all the audio came out distorted. Couldn't use any of the footage. And uh, I, I, it definitely took some testing after that to find the right you know, area to put it. You don't need it really close to you. Nice, far down, about halfway down your shirt, I found to be perfect. It picks up everything and it completely isolates everything around you, especially if you clip it underneath your shirt. So if you are in a crowded place, lots of noise, I highly recommend using the external microphone that it comes with. So when all is said and done, I highly recommend getting this action camera. If this is gonna be your first one, it's definitely one, especially if you're contemplating between this and getting a legitimate GoPro, especially a Hero 8 or 9. This is probably one of the perfect, like best cameras on the market that can compete and has many, many similarities to it. The touch screen and having the extra wind noise, the image stabilization, the good picture quality and the burst photo album, all that. It's the same as GoPro. And it's just, you, you can get a real feel for whether or not action cams are the right, you know, direction for you and for the content that you're creating. For fishing, by far, hands down, best budget camera, period. I was liking the AC700, but like I said in that video, the buttons up, down, the menu, it's really hard to navigate. It's a real kind of tedious pain just to do the simplest thing with this touch screen in and out. The UI and the menu is very, very user friendly and it's just quick in out playback. You get, you know, a reasonable, uh, reasonable playback to see whether or not you need to redo a clip or not. Uh, so I, I highly recommend it. Price point at its highest point on Amazon, $119.99, but on the Victor website itself, you can get it for $85. Either way, no matter where you get it from, it comes with 20 different accessories, which include two, two batteries. It comes with the external microphone, bunch of different clips and ons and screws. So you pretty much are set, again, except for the SD card. Micro SD card, class 10, anything from 128 gigs and below, that's what is needed, but make sure you get it because it doesn't come with it. So. Uh, you don't want to be just staring at your camera not being able to use it but thank you guys for watching i hope you enjoyed this video i didn't go really too in depth because the last video i did on the ac700 was pretty lengthy went kind of in depth it was more of a tutorial than a review and this one i wanted to focus on the review point so i would love to hear feedback and what you thought of this review and uh that will do it for me so uh, i'd like to hear from you in the comments below make sure you let me know if you get it and what you think and I'll see you in my next video.